And it's time for Python on Hardware. Yay, Blinka! Special 4th of July edition. Yay, Blinka with sparklers. So, 6,000 thanks. Thank you, everyone out there. We started the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter in November of 2016. And since then, we've published 129 newsletters, including the latest one. Um, we're very thankful all the readers and contributors. And we have 6,000 subscribers. So go to adafruitdaily.com and subscribe if you have not. Next up, CircuitPython Beta 4.1.0 is released. This is a super one. fast edition. Yeah. You can tell because she's got goggles. Yeah, the goggles, they do something. Um, it goes two to five times faster, and display refreshing will be faster as well. There's a bunch of other fixes and updates and more, and lots of thanks. Check out the blog post as well as the GitHubs. Also, more thanks. We have 500 people on CircuitPython on Reddit. Lots of people doing stuff on Reddit and uh, Python. So that was uh, an easy leap, I think. There was a big Python community, and I think they saw that there is now Python on hardware. So um, check us out on Reddit, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash CircuitPython. On the shows, big week. Yeah, we had a lot of visitors last week. Yeah, Naomi was on the show. Naomi not only wrote an amazing book. It's now in its third edition, the Quick Python book. But Naomi is the chair of the Python Software Foundation. We recently donated, so we had Naomi on there and more. Um, speaking of guests, we had Nina from Microsoft. And uh, you did a great interview with Nina. And uh, at the end of the, uh, and probably during the, I guess to say at the beginning, middle and end, there was, there was uh, previews of a project. And now this project is out. This is a Python 2.7 countdown. With multiple skins. Yeah. Look at the different skinning you can do there. He's like, whatever style you like. And this countdown is countdown Python. This is the countdown because there's no more Python 2.7 after this. It's no, all 3 you guys had 10 years to move your code over to Python 3. Come yeah. on, move it. Okay, next up, uh, there's a group of interns at Microsoft Vancouver. They're working on the Garage project called Pacifica, and this is for tools that help you build your physical computing projects. So check it out if you like Python on hardware. This is for you. Um, also, lots of uh, Adafruit folks in the news. If you, uh, my, one of my favorite Python blogs is Mouth for Py Python. Um, Scott, uh, who is, leads our Circuit Python development, was Py Dev of the Week. So check that interview out and more. Yay! Lady Ada, you were on Embedded FM. Yes, and I, I did talk a little bit about um, Circuit Python and Python on hardware. A lot more about engineering and the development of the hardware that becomes the hardware that Python runs on. Yeah. Called it skateboard tricks. Yeah. Okay. The uh, website opensource.com has a summer reading list, and the summer reading list, congratulations, Mike Barella, had getting started with Adafruit Circuit Playground Express, including a chapter on Circuit Python. Buy this book. Yes, buy this book. Um, other news, Katni is going to be keynoting Pi Ohio. That's kind of coming up pretty soon. Um, you can see they were tweeting about it. They said, uh, "Get ready, she's going to be a keynote speaker." And of course, like all conferences, there's now a count. Yeah. There's now a countdown. So it's it's a little bit closer than 27 days, uh, but that's coming up pretty soon. Yes, and if you're in the Ohio area, please go there, check out Katni's talk, which is going to be about Circuit Python, Python hardware, and Circuit Playground Express. Yeah, uh, she's given a couple of talks. I think it's her first keynote. Okay, uh, this is for people who like to do web automation and things like if then this that. Zapier, it's one of the ones that I really like. There is uh, Adafruit IO, and you can see the Circuit Python libraries yes, that work with we've, Adafruit IO there. We've done some projects. We have a REST library for Circuit Python that works with like the Pi Portal and other ESP32 based uh, Wi Fi devices. So um, we're adding more ways to connect, but uh, Zapier, if this and that, are a great way to get started. Okay, Bill Pinko has an excellent guide on how to get the teacher's attention if you're someone who has assistive technology. Uh, that you use in your life. So this is uh, based on a project Bill had said that a college student reached out to ask for help getting her professor's attention in class. The problem was she has SMA, it's spinal muscular atrophy, and couldn't raise her hand. So this is a trinket-powered device using CircuitPython, and uh, it just uh, installs, and this, this allows um, the student to, to get the professor's attention. Yeah, he's, he's doing some really interesting stuff with assistive technology and circuit Python and configurability because, you know, as people uh, get older, they have to grow up with their assistive tech. Um, it isn't just like, okay, I'm going to buy a, a new assistive tech when it comes out. Like, whatever you build, you usually yeah. with them for life. Okay, CircuitPython Day is 8-8-2019. We have a couple events um, already. 
So the first one is getting started with uh, microcontrollers at CircuitPython, that's NYC Resistor, and also the CircuitPython Day in India Linux user group at the Delhi Technical University for women. And we're working on some cool things. Like socks. Like socks, yeah. Not um, comfy. We found an issue with iOS 13 beta. We posted up about this and sent it over to Apple. So they have it for sure, but uh, the new iPad um, OS 13 beta, all of them, one, two, and three, I think we're up to three now, um, deletes files off some USB devices, including things like Circuit and Playground. So yeah. we let them know about it. It's a, you know, we have some USB traces. It's probably a FAT12 thing. I mean, they yeah. probably tested it with a bunch of USB sticks, but didn't have any USB devices that were FAT12, but that's what we use for our little mini uh, file systems. Yeah. But it'll probably get fixed, and then soon you'll be able to uh, move and copy and edit files on your CircuitPython boards. All right, circuitpython.org has some updates. First, by the numbers, we have 62 plus boards supported, adding each, uh, adding more boards each week. 16 plus single board computers, uh, Linux boards, and 162 libraries. Uh, Raspberry Pi 4 was added. I added it, yes. So um, just to let people know, uh, there's, we just had to make a little update to the platform detection to now detect the Pi 4, all three variants of the one, two, and four gigabyte. Um, but uh, GPIO, the RPI GPIO library is still being updated, um, so it mostly works, but like pull-up resistors don't quite yet. So um, if you're trying to use our CircuitPython libraries on a uh, Raspberry Pi 4 and you're having a couple issues, just hold tight, uh, and we'll get that fixed um, probably by next week. Also added Dragon Board 410C. Yes, this is exciting because this is the first 96 boards, um, and these are very powerful uh, Qualcomm slash Arrow development boards um, that have a lot of capability uh, and people have wanted to connect harder to them but um, having all those drivers of course is always a challenge so having Blinka uh, added to 96 boards now means you can use all of our breakouts and sensors and you can even wire up hats and bonnets if you like just watch out these are 1.8 volt uh, logic devices so you'll need to use a logic level shifter our guide shows you how okay uh, this is, uh, one of the, I like writing these titles, uh, headlines. Feather takes flight at Seed Studios with Grove Shield for particle mesh. It's not actually a shield, it's a, it's a feather wing. It's a, yeah, it's like an underwing. Yeah. Um, but what's exciting is, you know, we have CircuitPython available f to, for these uh, particle boards and people like using those NRF52840s. And if you've wanted uh, to use um, any of our feathers with Grove devices, you can now use this feather wing uh, with our CircuitPython library, which we have uh, tons of for our feathers and feather wings. Okay, some stuff from the community. Eric tweeted this. This is Eric's kids. Python for kids and all this CircuitPython hardware. These yeah, are, they're going to have a fun I know. summer. I was one of these kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Richard created a follower and listener account for his wife podcast using a CircuitPython powered pipe portal. And then um, this is neat. I, I tried to get this in the newsletter last week, but I just ran out of time because there was so much stuff going on. Um, this is a little board um, for a soldering and Circuit Python uh, class. This is yeah. a Dorkbot. I like and how they. I we. I don't know how they. Uh, we don't have an object for that Circuit Python logo. So they they must have gotten the logo yeah. and, and converted it and imported it. So it's pretty sweet. They so. probably used one of the guides that are out there. That's right. Okay. Nice graphics. Yeah, this is from Coding Couple. They got their Pi badge. And uh, they started making little avatars. I like I like this very uh, bit, you know, bitty eight bit um, avatar. Yeah. With graphics, and you can see as as the, it's like a hit counter. It's a hit point tracker for their D and D character. They call it Elf Gal. Yeah. Inspired by Doom Guy. I love the the blinking eyes. Okay, this is a preview of some of the gaming stuff that you can do on a Pi badge with CircuitPython. Yep, yeah, we have a guide on using this. This is the uh, stage library by Deshipu who's uh, been doing some really cool uh, Python, CircuitPython and MicroPython gaming stuff. So this is um, a demo showing three sprites, these balls, that they animate the sprites. They go through a little sprite loop animation, and they bounce on the screen, and there's uh, text that's rendered above them. So um, this library, I think this is based on Display.io now, and shows the kind of animations and graphics. Basic demo, but we're getting towards uh, more gaming and graphics. Yeah. on uh, Display.io. This is a CircuitPython-based string racer. It has a DC motor, uh, end of string sensors with predictive speed distance breaking algorithm. This is what um, a previous version looked like, and then this is the upcoming one. This is like hardcore. This is like the most, yeah. this is like an all-in-one string racer. If you're going to string race, this is the way you, you want to string race it up. 
Uh, TG Tech is working on another revision of the data lore IP M4, an interchangeable circuit Python ready module for soldering onto projects like the Adafruit M0 squeezed into a one inch square. This is not a Blackberry. It looks like it. Maybe even sounds like it. We'll clack the keyboard. But what this really is, is from Arturo. It's a this, Feather M4. It's the keyboard Featherwing. Yep. And it adds a display. I think it's like a 2.4 inch touchscreen display, uh, four buttons, a keyboard from a Q10 Blackberry. And they're using display, and they've already started doing a little um, interface work to. Uh, so you can like type and it displays, you can kind of like write fake emails. So they're kind of making a, a faux berry, but like a feather berry. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is interesting for a couple of reasons. This is Snackboard, and this is running a SAMD21. I've been following the Snack project for a while. Uh, this is a, a Python like language uh, that, that runs on boards like ours. Uh, also, CircuitPython runs on some of these. And Keith, who made this, uh, is basically doing this on his own. It's, it's a fully. Um, completed project now. I think SNEC is up to 1.0. And the interesting thing is Keith is, uh, was at HP and now he just moved to sci-fi. So we're going to probably see more people who do lots of Python on hardware for industrial uses. Yeah. Watch out. Risk five stuff. Watch out, industry. The snakes are coming. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. You might not want it. You might not need it. But it's coming. SNEC in its way. Okay. Um, I'll probably have more of this later. But uh, there's an update to Moo. Uh, we'll probably have this in next week's uh, Python on hardware because it just happened when we were recording. Uh, there's a new version of Moo, and it has a bunch of updates, including web mode. And then also, instead of it just saying Adafruit boards, it says CircuitPython because there's so many boards so many. besides Adafruit. And check out, it's also got ESP MicroPython support as yeah. well. Very popular. So check out the Moo editor. I think it has the file manager built in. So it'll make it easy to upload code. Uh, to your MicroPython boards running the ESP32 or 8266. Yeah, and then uh, this is kind of cool. This is uh, the Paquito, and there is now an, a Python-based IDE, web IDE, yeah, that and you it can has try. Yeah, like an emulator, too. And this yeah. is really neat because historically this, this gamer, I have one of these, and it's embed-based, which I think is extremely powerful, but is a little challenging uh, for beginners to get the tool chain going and to program in C or C++. So they're embracing uh, Python as a way to write games. Yeah. OK, Texas Instruments has yet another Python-based calculator. This time, they did something interesting. So the first round. This is the Python edition. It even says so. Yeah, it says edition Python edition. Python. The first round had an external, it was basically a trinket running CircuitPython. Yep. Now they're just like, you know what, let's just put a SAMD. They just put the trinket on the board. Yeah. So if you look up there, the, the two red dot chips See, like above the main chip, there's yeah. like a to the left, there's kind of an eight pin chip. That's the um, flash, the two megabytes of, of flash or whatever. And then to the right, it's a SAMD 21E18. So it's a trinket M0, basically. And they just plopped it on board. I think they probably were like, we don't have any space left on the main chip, or maybe the ROM was burned and they can't update it, or, or who knows yeah. what happened. But it probably ended up just being cheaper to spin a new board de design and just put a Python coprocessor on there, yeah. which is like, and then, you know, then the main processor can do the UI and, um, you know, handle if like it crashes, the, the Python interpreter crashes, and, and then it can just offload all the scripts and everything uh, to the SAMD21. So kind of fascinating. I want to get one of these because it's so yeah. cool and weird. Okay, next up, if you want to take some machine learning on the go, here's a portable computer vision project using TensorFlow on a Raspberry Pi. Some events that are coming up pretty soon, EuroPython. Um, it'll be happening next week. And if you're going, guess what you get? Everyone gets one of these. Pew pew. Yeah. Pew pew. pew. Badge. So this will be one of the things that all attendees get there. Other events that are coming up, Open Source Summit, August 21st, 23rd. This is PyCon UK, August 13th. Sorry, September 13th to 17th. And that's it for our Python on hardware. It's news. a bootloader. <laughs> <Yeah. pie. laughs> it is a bootloader. And that's it for the week. All right. Thanks, everybody.